Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira, and in this video I'm going to do more of a deep dive into the new HTML element plugin in Construct. This is great for designing user interfaces and uh, parts of your game using HTML and CSS. Uh, it was covered briefly in uh, the release video, in the Construct release which uh, it came out in. In this video I'll go into some more detail and show you how to use it um, what, what you can make with this new plugin. It's very powerful and there's a, a lot you can do, so I'll just cover a few of the basics and show some of the capabilities. Uh, in this video, I won't be teaching how HTML and CSS themselves work. Uh, there's plenty of information on the web about learning those. Uh, I'll assume that you'll have a basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. If you've ever done any kind of web design, you should be able to follow along, no problem. Okay, so here's our first example. This is the HTML element object in Construct, and its content is just a, a, a small snippet of text with uh, the word wor uh, world in a uh, strong style, uh, which is by default a bold emphasis. Uh, and if I preview this project, you can see the text world appears in bold. So that's your basic usage of HTML. Let's now add a uh, CSS file and we'll start adding some styles to customize this. So in Construct, in the project bar, you can now uh, right click the files section and add in a new style sheet. And these styles will be applied to the uh, document which the game appears in. Uh, so I'm just going to add a very simple style which takes uh, the strong tag and we'll change the color uh, to blue. And now when we preview, you can see the word world has now appeared in blue. Uh, that's just a very simple piece of CSS to modify its appearance. Um, let's make another change to the element itself. So in the properties bar here, when you select HTML element, uh, you can see you can also choose a class for it. And I'm just going to uh, set the class to my element. And now if I go back to the CSS file, I can use the class my element so that's putting a dot at the start for a class selector and let's give it a uh, a blue border let's uh, uh, solid blue uh, give it a border radius which will make the corners round and give it a bit, a bit of padding which just will move the text away from the border and now if I preview that you can see there's a solid blue border. Uh, it's got a border radius of uh, 1M. EM, uh, M units are relative to the font size. So 1EM means uh, the same size as the font. And there's some padding, so now the text is uh, moved away from the border slightly. Now, um, one very useful part of uh, Construct's use of HTML uh, element is the uh, auto font size setting here, which by default is on. Um, that means the font size CSS property will adjust automatically um, depending on the scale of the game. And so if I resize the window, you can see that it automatically scales down to match the scale of the preview window. And you can see this piggy here is a sprite, so you can see how the HTML element is scaling the same way the sprite does. So as long as you use M units, you should be uh, fine with the, all your HTML content automatically scaling uh, to match the game, which is very useful. If I just uh, very quickly switch to pixel units, CSS pixels, I'm just making up some numbers here, you should be able to see the difference. Um, and so this will not adjust those sizes based on the scale of the game uh, because they are using PX sizes instead of EM sizes. And if you change the size, you can see the border isn't adapting uh, with the scale or the padding either. Um, so that doesn't look quite right. Uh, so the lesson here is just make sure you use M sizing to adjust to the font size. And then everything should look fine, no matter the scale. So that's a, a very useful uh, tip for that. Now, uh, let's just show a bit of interactivity in this um, 
example. So I'm going to add a button and when you click the button it will update some text to say yes you clicked the button. And so I'm going to add a button element and I'm going to give it a class because this helps us identify different uh, elements. So that's a button which says click me and here is a paragraph which says was the button clicked and now I'm going to use a span element um, with the class click result which starts off saying no. Now span is uh, an element which you can use to wrap just a small piece of text so this will allow us to style and update the content of this span um, independently of the rest of this paragraph. So take note of these classes, button uh, class my button and the span class click result. And I'm just going to make two more CSS changes here. First of all, um, slightly surprisingly, buttons don't automatically use uh, M units uh, in their font size, so they won't scale automatically. So if you just add font size 1M, that will uh, fix that. And now if I use the uh, click result class and I can highlight that by making it bold. Now if I preview this you can see we've got our button uh, which should now scale with the uh, display size and it says was the button clicked? No. And no is in bold because that's our click result. Uh, so now I want to make it so when you click the button this piece of text updates to say yes. And so I'm going to use the event sheet to do this and show some event blocks which can make that happen. So first of all, I'm going to add the trigger which will fire when the button is clicked. And so in the HTML element object, I'm going to use onClickedClass. So it can detect a particular element with a specific class being clicked. And the class was uh, my button. So that's the class of the button element. So this will detect the button being clicked. And now, as the action, I want to change the text in the click result span to say yes. And so, again, you can use the action in the HTML element object, and we can use set content. So this can set the content of the entire object or just part of it. And to set uh, just part of it, um, well, first of all, we're going to use plain text. It's going to say yes, you clicked it. And the selector is... Um, this is the element whose content will be updated. And if you remember, that span was called click result. Now, uh, just to note, this is a CSS selector. Uh, so similar to how we write CSS uh, rules, um, that begins with a dot to refer to the class click result. Uh, if there's multiple elements, you can update all of them. In this case, there's just one. And now if I preview the project and click the button, there we go. So Using HTML and CSS, uh, I've detected a click on a button element and it's updated part of the HTML accordingly. So that just uh, shows you the beginnings of how you can start to put together parts of your game uh, using HTML and CSS and add some interactivity in there as well. So that's the basics of HTML element. Um, I'm going to move on and show you another example which uh, comes with Construct in the example browser. Uh, so you can find some of these examples here. And let's take a, a closer look at the HTML table example. So a great use for HTML and CSS is using HTML tables to display tables of data, which would be uh, difficult. Uh, it's quite tricky using normal game objects to do that. And um, here's how it looks. And uh, the overflow scrolling is a, a nice feature of CSS to just automatically handle scrolling. And you can see the HTML element in Construct here has the outline of a table. So it's got the table, uh, the header, and the body of the table here is empty. There is not any content there on startup. The content is fetched from a 2D array. Uh, you can see all the data here. And let's look at the event sheet and see how that's loaded into the table. On startup, that uh, array will be fetched using Ajax. Um, it will then be loaded into an array and once it's loaded for every row in the array it will insert a row to the HTML table. Let's take a look at this expression. It's quite a long expression but fundamentally what it's doing is you can see that the TR tag is for a table row 
and then it inserts four table cells. These are the TD elements. And inside each cell, it adds a different value. The value comes from the current row of the array. And zero means the first column, one is the second column, two is the third column, and so on. And we use the escape HTML expression because uh, that's an important way to make sure that user-entered content does not accidentally uh, or maliciously use any HTML tags. Um, so that will make sure it's displayed as text instead of HTML inside the table cell. And then, of course, uh, as we saw before, this uh, works nicely. And now we have all the content in the table. Um, Another thing you can use, which I'll only cover very briefly, are the browser developer tools. If you've pressed F12 and used a console before, uh, you'll have seen this before. And the uh, dev tools in Chrome uh, that I'm using here are really great. Most browsers have uh, equivalent dev tools, which are just as powerful. And you can use this button to pick an element and inspect everything. It's really useful for uh, checking how everything looks and adjusting the styles. So here, if I pick this cell, you can see this is the HTML for the cell with my name in it there. And I can adjust the styles using developer tools. Uh, let's change the color to blue. And there it is, it's blue. And change the font size to uh, twice as large. And there we go. I've already adjusted some of the styles there. And you can turn styles on and off. Uh, so this provides a really good way to quickly um, test out your styles, uh, see them update in real time. And then once you've decided on a nice set of styles, you can then add them to your CSS file. So this is a great way to try out and prototype all your different changes. Uh, we use this for developing Construct itself. Uh, it's a really uh, great development process, as, of course, Construct is all browser-based. OK, so that's an um, example of the table. And let's take a look at the um, HTML menu example. So this is a, a more advanced example. Um, it shows off uh, a more sort of complex uh, user interface control in this menu here. And it uses lots of features, uh, SVG for these icons here. Um, and you can see the SVG fill color changes on the hover. So on the hover, both the text and the icon are changed to uh, a white fill. Uh, this element, the menu here, sizes to fit the content. And let me just uh, demonstrate how that works. In the HTML file here for the menu, this is uh, this is where the HTML code for the menu is. There's quite a lot here, but most of it is these SVG icons. Uh, SVG being vectors, so they scale nicely at any size. Um, so the menu item is this div element. Um, that's all the icon there, and this is the text uh, for the menu item. And just to demonstrate uh, how it automatically sizes. Let's make that menu text a lot longer and try it out. And you can see that the menu has now automatically adjusted its width to fit the content. And I can do a similar thing where um, if I make this much shorter, so rotate counterclockwise, let's just use initials to make it smaller, and rotate clockwise, preview again, and now the menu has shrunk down to fit its content. And you can add more menu items, and it will extend further down as well. So this is a great feature of HTML. The layout will adapt to the size of the content. And again, this is another thing, like with the table, it's quite fiddly to do this with all your normal text objects and sprites and such. And as I said, as I showed before, the scaling all works nicely, and these SVG icons still look sharp, uh, no matter how big or small you scale, uh, because that's how vector graphics work. Um, so take a look at this example. It's all commented and uh, explained how it works. So you can take a look at the CSS here. And for example, if you scroll down and look at uh, these styles, this is how the text and the icons change color when you hover the mouse over the menu items. So the menu item class uh, has a hover state, which will make the background color blue. It will make the color of the text turn white and it will make the fill color of the SVG uh, turn white as well. And that's how both the text and the icons change color when you hover the mouse over them. 
that's all I'm going to show in this video for now. Um, as ever, you can find lots of examples in the example browser. We may be adding some more over time. So to filter all of the ones using that plugin, you can go to uh, the HTML element filter here. And those are all of the ones we have at the moment. Um, HTML and CSS are excellent ways of designing user interfaces, showing grids and tables of data. It's uh, really powerful and it's used uh, all over the industry for user interface design and uh, designing elements of games, which uh, some even integrate the Chromium engine to use HTML and CSS to add to the game uh, display on top of the game. Uh, Construct being fully browser-based, uh, everything integrates nicely because it's all HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WebGL, and so on. So this is a great new feature of Construct. You can use it uh, to your heart's content, use everything from CSS grid, Flexbox, uh, CSS animations, transitions, so on and so forth. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing everything that you make with it. So if you make something cool, let us know. And uh, thanks for listening.